All right. So, uh, welcome, Sandhya. We are uh, doing a demo for uh, feedback in coaching conversation. And um, thank you for volunteering to uh, take the feedback here and getting recorded on that. We'll be using this to um, as a resource for other students to learn how to how do you give feedback in coaching conversations. Are you comfortable at this stage, Sandhya? Yeah. Hi, Jaya. Yeah, I'm good with that. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Sandhya, what is your reason to be uh, asking for feedback here? Basically, to improvise myself, I need to know where the gaps are. Uh, basically, understand what I can do better. Mm -hmm. um, not exactly knowing where I'm wrong, but knowing what I can do better, which is more right. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm looking forward as a feedback. Okay. So Sandhya, um, uh, I, uh, so, so what's the scope of this conversation? Is it, is it this program that you're going through? Yes, it okay. can be the scope of the program. It can also be me as a person. That's also fine. Okay. And what is that you want me to give feedback on? as to how I have been doing mm -hmm. in, in the past few months. Okay. And how well I have been reflecting on myself uh, that you have observed during the past few months. Okay. Okay. So Sandhya, uh, when it comes to, um, you know, about how are you reflecting, how you're doing, uh, what exactly do you want me to focus on? Um, basically focus on if I've completed two months of the sessions, mm -hmm. whether I am on the right track or not. Okay. And how do you define the right track? Basically out of your experience, you would have seen, uh, people who are in the midway, mm -hmm. uh, so there will be a benchmark, right? Um, to understand whether this person has what it takes to become a coach, what it takes to um, do what is the person aspiring for. Okay. So whether I fit that bill or not, that's mm. the kind. Interesting. Interesting. So, so uh, Sandhya, uh, when you say whether you fit the bill or not, or how you're doing in the middle of the journey. Um, I just would like to ask you as to, have you seen um, more experienced coaches or people who are a little ahead in the journey? Have you observed some of them? I have seen a few videos mm -hmm. of yours as well as a few uh, in certain other uh, areas. Um, okay in the in the organization i've seen yeah okay okay and uh based on what you have seen sandhya what's mm -hmm. your assessment about yourself based on what you have seen i think i have a long way to go um okay i think i still have issues with people trusting me um the empathy part is probably something that I need to work on. Okay. I have lots of gaps, even in the listening skills, okay. um, especially when it comes to the real life as well. Mm -hmm. Not only coaching. Um, so I think those are certain areas according to me, but I would like to hear from you. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, Sure, sure. I'm going to do that. I'm just trying to uh, see what's your view on yourself. So if you have to list down top three strengths of yours as a coach, because that's the context we are talking in, what do you think are your top three strengths as a coach so far? One thing has been that I get into the coach shoes pretty easily. Um, um, I mean, I can calm myself soon. Uh, so I get into the scenario, whatever the current situation is, and I get into that pretty easily, no matter what the hustle bustle around me. 
um the other thing is um i am though still learning uh, the art of asking questions um i think i'm getting there slowly i wouldn't say that's my biggest strength but i think i'm going there uh, i'm still not where i want to be but i am progressing towards it which is a good which is a good sign mm -hmm. um the other aspect is um, the other strength i can't think of any i feel all the other areas i have to work on um okay okay so you said can you just summarize this three one is you get into coach mode very soon that's one number two number two is uh, um the questions uh, that i ask i am kind of getting a hang of it okay so, and number three number three i don't have frankly i feel everything else is an improvement area for me okay so it's like improvement area so i mean you have i'm sure that you are somewhere and you need to be somewhere so let's say on a scale of 0 to 10 what are mm -hmm. the other qualities where you are somewhere and you need to be somewhere okay i think it's the trust part the empathy part okay. uh, trust maybe i am at a let's go one by one so you said empathy okay. right that's what you started with yeah empathy so Yeah, so on a zero to ten, you you initially said that the empathy part is probably something that I need to work on. Where do you think you are currently on zero to ten? I think I am at a three or four. Three or four, and where would you ideally like to be? Nine or ten. <laughs> Nine or ten, and what does that three? Uh, so so let's write it down, and then we'll work on the solutioning later. But you're saying you're at three, and you would like to be at eight. Okay, what's the next thing? I'm at three. I would like to be at nine. Just to sorry, just sure. So three and nine. So yeah, I'm, I'm making a note of that. All right. And the second one is trust. Uh, sorry, yeah, trust. You said right. Trust, yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust again. I think I'm at probably four. Okay. Again, I would like to be at around nine. Okay. All right. So I'm saying empathy is four. You, uh, three. You would like to be nine. Trust you said you're at four. You would like to be nine, right? Yeah. Okay. What else? Listening. Um, uh, I would probably like to be at about. I I am currently at about five. Not that bad, but not so good either. Okay. So five, um, and you would like to be at. Uh, maybe a ten. because yeah. that's the key to coaching so that's key to coaching right absolutely and what else and probably the the questioning part again um mm -hmm. um sometimes in the retro i feel i have not asked the right questions i or i could have done better mm -hmm. so maybe the powerful powerful questioning part is something that so maybe questioning is one aspect but asking powerful questions to get people what they want is something that i need to work on so maybe again i am at a 5 there and would like to get to a 10 okay all right is that all yeah okay thank so okay awesome so i'm hearing the main competencies of coaching so let's say when you say you get into coaching mode very fast which is the coaching mindset um it, it seems where where are you on that what do you feel i feel i am at an 8 um uh -huh. 7 or 8 um okay and where would you like to be a 10 again and again okay and then i heard empathy trust empathy 3 to 9 trust is 4 to 9 listening is 5 to 10 questioning is 5 to 10 and this is just 2 months in the journey yeah yeah so when you hear this all back how does it make you feel okay i i feel i'm not that bad i'm probably in the midway somewhere uh huh having considering the fact that i'm midway into the hmm 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's that's what um, um, my thinking is that I feel that you have just started the journey and for that, these kind of scores are pretty good. Um, maybe what can be done, uh, Ramya, uh, Sandhya, is uh, I at times sense a little bit of rushing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel that, you know, a little hurry to get in getting to the answer. Mm. So uh, maybe what could have been happening because of that is the uh, the the depth of reflection can get compromised if you're rushing through things. Mm. And there can be some answers which can come from there. Right. And as a as a coach, we need to be an expert of reflection. Because when we reflect, we are we are able to get others to reflect, and we appreciate its power. Then, mm. does, does that resonate with you? Yes, I think. I guess you're right. I guess you're right, and I think that would solve some of my listening and the empathy part as well. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. So, so um, that's that's my notice so far. I feel a little bit of patience can actually just do the magic for you. What mm -hmm. do you would like to do about it? I think I would like to take more pauses, slow mm -hmm. down in the way or the the way I ask the questions. I think. Uh, especially the depth part is something that's lacking, you're right. Um, the way I ask the questions, they're not deep enough, uh, probably again. So yeah, I would probably need to slow down is what I see. Like I said, I, I like to rush. I mean, I constantly am challenging myself to kind of push things faster than before. So I think that mindset is stopping me from this being patient kind of an attitude. Mm. And and uh, uh, how did you learn this mindset of rushing, finishing fast, close it? How did you learn this? Um, I think it comes uh, naturally one way. It's hereditary probably. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is... Um, my mom is like that. I mean, uh, she's a very dynamic personality, keeps running around even at, at, and at a very uh, later age of her life. So, so I'm kind of, part of it is hereditary. The other part is the sense of time, mm. uh, you know, managing home, family, office. Mm. Uh, that puts a lot of time pressure on you. So you're constantly rushing through things everywhere. Mm. Mm. just to become this perfect working mom yeah. mm -hmm. so I think uh, these are the two factors um, okay so so am I hearing you're trying to be perfect somewhere yeah <laughs> I think uh, that's a constant battle between or within yourself um, you know perfect become a perfectionist so I kind of don't like it when others finish my my work, mm. even at home. Um, so I get into this frustrated or irritated mood when somebody else does things that I'm supposed to do mm. because that makes me feel that I am, I'm not right or maybe I'm incapable, um, you know, puts me in that kind of a situation though that might not be true the intention of the other person is probably just to help me out, but um, I get into that mode. Mm, okay. So now you know the context of where it comes from and you also know what you would like to work upon. How would you like to go about this? Mm, I think I need to change my mindset about it. I need to let things be the way they are. Stop fighting with myself. Stop pushing myself. And say it's okay to 
probably not be a perfectionist everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably okay to, uh, you know, make a few mistakes or let others help you out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe would give me a little patience. <laughs> Interesting. So, so you know, you understood the context. You also have an idea that you would like to work upon this. What will you tangibly do tomorrow, the day that's coming tomorrow, Sunday? What are you going to tangibly do to practice this? Mm. Maybe I would do things more in a more relaxed way. Um, Can you give me an example? Um, for example, even on Sundays, I try to rush cooking. Okay. Just to make sure that the rest of the day, I'm kind of sitting idle. Or Okay. But do you sit idle? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, right? That's the gist of it. You know, you don't sit idle even then. You have something or the other to do. Um, yeah, you have an idea of sitting idle, but you never do. Yeah, I somehow I can never do that. Even my daughter says that I I can't sit idle wherever I am, mm. uh, even at my mom's place. So I kind of need to keep doing something or the other. Um, mm. So yeah. I understand, that, but I don't know what I can change. Um, Okay, so just, just one thing that you will change tomorrow, which is Sunday. You'll just practice, not even changing. you just practice changing to more, for tomorrow, just for one day, which will help you gain a, maybe a drop of patience. I'll stop looking at the clock. Uh-huh, how will you do that? <laughs> I know it's difficult, but probably... I generally do everything time bound. So uh -huh. uh, maybe I'll stop doing that. Um, maybe that's the root cause. Uh, I, how, will you, how will you do that? Well, sorry. Where do you do for time? On your phone? Do you have a clock around your bed? Around, yeah, at home. So wherever there's a clock, I kind of tend to look at things and say, okay, now's the time to eat. Now's the time to sleep. Now's the time to bathe and everything. You know, everything is time bound for me. Mm. so I think that's where the impatience also comes um, maybe that's something I'll try to avoid for a day and see how things go okay okay uh, so what are you promising to do tomorrow then I somehow feel it's not a very sustainable idea though mm. um, because obviously our lives are driven by time yeah, is, that a, is that a generalization you're living with? Yeah, kind of. Is that true for everybody? I guess so, but I think some people try to avoid time altogether. Oh, okay. So is it is it um, is it that some people try to avoid or some people live by time? Is there something in between? Mm. I'm hearing a bit of... Um, conclusion on relationship with time yeah um, I think there are a few things that are time bound mm. there are few things that are not so probably that are ones that are not time bound we can probably ignore and move ahead uh, and not become impatient about them there are a few things probably like attending school or office, which are prob which are definitely time bound and probably needs more focus on time on those in those cases. So maybe I can learn to prioritize and look at time only for a few things and not for everything. So, so great ideas. What exactly one thing you'll do which will not hurt you that much? One thing, just small thing tomorrow, Sunday. Sunday, I think um, maybe I'll not time box myself for cooking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. Probably. You want to try that tomorrow? Yeah. I'll awesome. Try awesome. Great. So we'll just wrap up this conversation here, uh, Sandhya. 
Um, what did you just learn about yourself when it came to, I mean, what feedback are you taking away? I think uh, the feedback that I am taking away is, is the, the impatience part, uh, you know, um, and that is the trigger for a lot of things that I'm not getting at. Mm -hmm. So it's probably the, the empathy, the listening, asking powerful questions, which hinders the depth of reflection. So all of, all of these things, I think, are driven by one source. And that is what I have understood from this conversation. Hmm. Interesting. And if I probably work on that one thing, being patient, hmm. maybe that will solve a lot of things for me, both professionally and personally, and for coaching. <laughs> so, How does that sound to you? Sounds good. Sounds... Um, like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So thank you so much for volunteering for this conversation, Sandhya. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jayan. Thank you very much. It's nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.